Hello friends, I still the simplifier and uh, we're here again to simplify science. Today we'll be looking at a wonderful element called carbon. Now but before we do this, I remember there was this repeat message that was sent to me on our YouTube handle uh, where a student asked if I could lay emphasis on the equilibrium constant. KP and KEQ. Now remember when we were looking at equilibrium, I told you that questions will always come on these two constants. They are equilibrium constants, but one deals with molar concentration, while the other deals with partial pressure. Our KP has to do with partial pressure. Why the KEQ has to do with a molar concentration. And if you remember what I said in that video, I told you that this deals majorly with gases. And that you cannot have a solid having a KEQ value. I used the Haber process to explain this. But right now, I'm not going to use the Haber process. I'm going to use the contact process for the manufacture of Tetra also sulfate cis acid. So let me just take this off before we look at carbon. Now let's look at the contact process. Remember that this process is for the industrial manufacture of our tetra oxo sulfate 6 acid, our H2SO4. You know that this comes in a variety of names. We call this tetra oxo sulfate 6 acid. We can also refer to this as sulfuric acid. This can also be called the oil of vitriol. And of course, we can also refer to this as acidified water. So whichever of these names you come across, we're still talking about our H2SO4. I trust you got that. Now, if we are to manufacture our sulfuric acid in the contact process, these are the reactions. First, I have sulfur reacting with oxygen gas to give me sulfur peroxide gas. So for four oxide gas produced in reaction one will be subjected to more oxygen gas to give us this compound, sulfur six oxide. But sometimes they call it sulfur trioxide. It's also cool. Now remember, is our equation balanced? Let's see this. Is it balanced? Ah, don't think so. Insert it too at this point. So if I do that, sulfur is 2, sulfur is 2, oxygen 4 plus 2, 6, and oxygen, that is balanced. So sulfur trioxide is formed in reaction 2. Uh, now take note, this reaction is basically forward and backward. We'll come to that later. Now our sulfur trioxide will be passed through some amount of sulfuric acid to give us a compound. H2S2O7, which we refer to as oleum. Or some textbooks will tell you is disulfuric acid, but it's still oleum. Now, oleum will pass through water to give us the compound we want to manufacture. That is our tetraoxosulfate 6 acid. I trust you got that. Now, these four reactions are the reactions in the contact process for the industrial manufacture of sulfuric acid, our oil of vitriol. Now, I'll, my interest here is on reaction two. Now, once the reaction gets to this, it must form this. This is an important reaction step in this process. So I'm gonna use this to explain to the students who asked me this question, I'm going to use this reaction, that's reaction two, to explain our KP and our KEQ. Now look at this. Reaction two, remember, so for four oxide gas, oxygen gas, to give us sulfur trioxide, a gas. Is it balanced? Let's balance this place. 
It's always important you balance your chemical reaction. A reaction is not a reaction if it's not balanced. Remember, number of moles of product and of reactant, you must check that out. Two moles of sulfur at the reactant part, two moles of sulfur there at the product. What about oxygen? Four at this point plus two. Now it is four because this coefficient, this one will multiply the number of atoms. That will give me four plus two, that's six. And two times three for oxygen, that is six. So this is balanced. Now if I want to get my Kp for this reaction, remember I said during the equilibrium video that Kp has to do its partial pressure of products all divided by the partial pressure of the reactant. Now I said this funny looking symbol represents partial pressure. So we have this. Remember, no, no molar concentration, everything partial pressure. Take note. Okay, so let's look at this now. What are our reactants? What are the products? Sulfur trioxide is the only product we have there. But my reactants, I have sulfur four oxide and I have oxygen gas. So look at this now. So partial pressure of product, the product is my sulfur trioxide. That will be the partial pressure of sulfur trioxide. It has a coefficient 2. This will be raised to power 2. All divided by the partial pressure of, I have two reactants now. One is sulfur 4 oxide. It has a coefficient 2. This will be raised to power 2. Times, remember, not addition, not subtraction, but a multiplication. Multiplied by the partial pressure of the other reactant, oxygen gas. This is 1, so there's no need for us to write a 1. So this is my Kp for this reaction. I hope you got that. Now, if I am to write the Keq, equilibrium constant, for this same reaction. Pardon me, let me take this off. I want to get my Keq, the equilibrium constant, now based on molar concentration for this same reaction. You know, I gave you this, I said this is concentration of products, all divided by concentration of the reactants. I said use a square bracket, it means molar concentration, not the other one. Take note. So concentration of product over reactant, and here we still have our sulfur trioxide as the only product. If there were two, remember what you did to the reactant, you do for one of the product, put it times, then the other one, the same thing. But here we have just one product, and that is my sulfur trioxide. So it is concentration raised to power the coefficient. You've seen that. All divided by the molar concentration of SO2 raised to power 2 times the concentration of oxygen gas. This is my KEQ. I trust you all understand this. Now, I am doing this because they are all in gaseous states. Remember, if they are not in gaseous states, I cannot get my Kp because partial pressure refers to major league gases. And if these were solids, I wouldn't have gotten my Keq. I believe this is understood. That is equilibrium. If you have more questions, please, you're free to forward them. Now, I said today we're supposed to look at carbon. We're supposed to look at carbon. Carbon is a very essential element. Virtually everything about life has some deposits of carbon in them. Yeah, talk about your skin, although the human hair, although this is sulfur, but if you look at your skin deposits, even the shells of organisms, they are made up of carbon compounds. Though not in elemental form, it might be in combination with other substances. So in nature, carbon can exist in elemental form or in combination with other elements. For example, look at this, my limestone. Limestone, which is also called marble, or you call it chalk. Now take note, this is not your blackboard chalk. The blackboard chalk has this formula. The blackboard chalk is actually calcium tetraoxosulfate 6. That is the chalk used on the blackboard. But this is not the blackboard chalk, our limestone. So you see, carbon, a major constituent of your limestone. Even in dolomite, we have dolomite. Dolomite is just magnesium trioxocarbonate 4. 
that is dolomite. You see, carbon is an essential part of this. So carbon can exist as an element in elemental form in nature or in combination with compounds such as some of these that I have mentioned. Now, in nature, in the earth crust, carbon consists of about 0.02% of the total carbon in the earth crust in the form of your calcium carbonate, your magnesium carbonate, and other trouser carbonates. But in the air, carbon is made up of 0.03% of the total constituent of air. So take note of this percentage, though they look pretty small, but very important. Now, even carbon exists not just in inorganic compounds like we have mentioned, also in organic compounds like your methane. You remember your methane, yes. Some of you walk in, uh, you, you go around your areas, you see high deposits of dirt. Deposit of dirt. Now, you notice when it starts raining, what do you notice on that very large deposit of dirt, paper dirt or whatever, heaps? What do you notice? Smoke coming out. Now, that thing that looks like a smoke vapor coming out is actually methane. Yeah, methane is a gas. You can actually use this for burning. That is methane. So whether methane, whether butane, or any other organic compound, carbon is a, an essential part, a major part of those compounds. And that is why if we must study carbon, we must look at carbon as an essential part of both organic and inorganic compounds. And we must look at the hybridization pattern, the hybridization pattern of carbon, your sp3, sp2, and sp. Most of your textbooks will just tell you alkanes sp3, alkenes sp2, alkynes sp. Now what I'm going to do is in my next video, I will tell you how you actually got each of these hybridization patterns. Remember, go to our Facebook page, The Simplifier One, our Instagram page, The Simplifier One, like our videos, comment on them, Share those videos and please, please, I keep begging, don't forget, go to our YouTube platform, The Simplifier One, and click on that subscribe button. I will see you in the next video.